So that's just some quick tips now about the brush tool and quick tips about moving around the interface. Um, I showed you how to uh, enable the flat toolbar and how you can customize your toolbar. Um, I just also want to talk to you briefly here about workspaces and then we'll move over to Animate and Animate Pro. And um, I should probably also talk to you shortly about shortcuts. So let's do those two things. So I also just want to mention here about workspaces and that is a workspace is a saved configuration of the window layout. So right now I've been working in the drawing workspace. So the drawing workspace, it automatically saves these workspaces by the way. So if I adjust my interface while I'm in the drawing workspace, it's going to save those adjustments for the next time I'm in this workspace. If you clicked on a different workspace like the timeline workspace or you know the thumbnail workspace, now it will bring up that window sort of within that um, timeline view to show you what that looks like. Uh, you can also, though, create your own custom workspaces, and all of these workspaces at the top save not only the window configuration, by the way, but also which toolbars are showing. So um, when you're adjusting, if you want to create your own custom workspace, you need to make sure that you have windows and then toolbars and the workspace toolbar on. And then which that shows this toolbar over here, and this toolbar then has a drop-down menu of the toolbars that are, or of the workspaces that are available that you can use. And you'll notice that there are some that will look familiar. There's the, t the drawing workspace, the timeline workspace, the overview. These ones all match these buttons over here. So those are your default workspaces that come with Storyboard Pro. And I've also added a new one called Lily, which I, I think is probably doesn't have anything special in it. I was just um, showing people how to use the concept of workspace. But, um, but what's interesting about this is that if you want to do something that's completely different from these ones or you don't want to touch these ones when you're making your modifications then you can always save this one and that's going to be saved to your user preferences on your machine so if you click on this workspace manager button in the workspace toolbar then this will allow you to take any one of these uh, workspaces that you have there and if you click on the plus sign it's going to kind of duplicate that workspace and then you can add it by clicking on the right facing arrow there. You can add it to the list and if you add it to the list it will show up in your drop down list over here. And then when you click apply and OK, when you go back here now you see that additional workspace here. So you can select the workspace and then now you can modify it. This is something that perhaps might be useful um, if you're working in Storyboard Pro 3D for example and you want to set up your own custom 3D layout if you're, um, you know, if you're having a, a good way that you like to work with the top view and the stage view and the side view all open at the same time, uh, then you can save your own custom workspace for that purpose and then you can always access it through this drop down menu. It's not going to have its own button on the, um, on the other toolbar over here but you will always be able to access it from the drop down list in the workspace toolbar. So that's the main thing to know about workspaces and being able to save your workspace the way that you want. Now I just want to give you one last little tip about this before we leave Storyboard Pro. And that tip is about um, the, the tools on your toolbar and the shortcuts that are associated with those tools. So I just want to pop open Storyboard Pro Preferences, Edit Preferences on Windows of course, and show you that the first tab in here is your Shortcuts tab. And when you're looking in your shortcuts tab, this is where you can adjust the um, shortcuts to go with any tool. And um, you'll see here, and um, forgive me for being on, on Mac, which has these funny symbols, but when you're on, um, when you're in this toolbar, um, you'll, or in this preference window, you'll see that there is a shortcut that's set here. And this shortcut is, um, what they call overridable and so I really I want to make sure that you understand what that means because it's something that is is covered in the documentation but I think is a little bit more difficult to understand um, without having an explanation of it so if you hold down alt and then press B um, then what it's going to do is it's going to switch to that tool permanently but if and you notice all of these drawing tools have an alt so alt V is going to flip vertical you know and um, alt T is going to uh, select your cutter tool, so on and so forth. Um, so all of those shortcuts 
when you hold down Alt and press the shortcut for that tool, it's going to permanently switch to that tool. When you are um, instead just going to hold down the B key, just like when you're using the O key to resize, while you're holding down the O key, you press and you drag. If you do the same thing, and I'll show you over here, let's uh, just select the paint bucket. Okay, I've got my paint bucket selected so I can paint things in. Wonderful. What if I have my paint bucket selected, but I just temporarily want to go to my brush tool? I can hold down B, and as I'm holding down B, while I'm holding it down, it's going to select my brush tool. And when I let go, it's going to go right back to my paint bucket tool. So hopefully you can see why this is useful because then you can you know just do some things and then you can quickly switch from one tool to another tool and um, a lot of people would like to use this particularly with the paint or the paint on painted tool because you can be in your brush tool and you can be drawing and then you can just quickly select your paint bucket click to paint it and then go back to your brush tool to continue drawing and that's particularly useful so um, I know some people don't like the overridable shortcuts because they might be familiar with flash which which has you know just the regular B to switch to your to your brush tool but I really highly recommend that you try to work with these overridable shortcuts because I promise you it will be much faster your workflow will be so much faster if you can get to know some of these overridable shortcuts so um, yeah that's a really good thing to know on that front and so right before I go to Harmony now because or Animate Pro because I have finished uh, most of the stuff I wanted to talk about on um, on Storyboard Pro, there's just one last thing, and that is, you know, and let me just turn off the texture on my brush here. I don't want texture on it. Okay. So you know that um, you have the ability in Storyboard Pro to use your cutter tool, and if you draw intersecting lines, you can just click on the end of that line and it's going to select up until the next intersection so that you can hit delete. And this is one of those things that I think that some people didn't know about that exists in the software. Um, I went recently to go and see a studio that was uh, working with our software and they didn't know this one. So it's slightly different from the mouse gesture that you see in Animate because when you're using the mouse gesture in Animate you can actually just swipe your mouse like so. But in this one what you just have to do is you over your um, inner intersecting lines there. You can just click, just a simple left click, will select up until the next intersection. So those are the interface highlights that I wanted to show you today for Storyboard Pro, and um, I'm sure that there are other hidden functionalities and things that I can talk to you about uh, regarding Storyboard Pro. But um, if they come to me, then I can um, go back to that. But later, but let's for now, let's switch to Anime Pro.